What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Lollipops to Die For. I'm your host, Stephanie. This is my co-host, Simona. And today we're going to talk about the blood countess of the most prolific female serial killer of all time. So today we're going to talk about one of the most prolific serial killer women in history. Um, her name was Elizabeth Bathory of Exet. She was uh, born in, 19, in 1560 and died in 1614. She was a Hungarian noble woman and she, um, she's known for her sadistic and brutally um, approach to killing people. <laughs> back in that era she's actually known to be uh, the, as the blood countess or the countess of dracula i know in the united states the count the counter of dracula is very well known so that's one of the reasons why i chose her she is actually known for being nobility so she was born elizabeth bathory exedi uh, she comes from hungary uh, and also her brother was actually a nobleman in Transylvania in Romania and uh, her mom was uh, Baroness Anna Bathory, the daughter of another king in Transylvania. And she's also the niece of Stephen Bathory, the king of Poland. So she comes from a very well-to-do family that lacked nothing. She was also married for 29 years uh, to um, Bathory, uh, to Ferek. Nadazdi, the son of Baron and uh, of a Baron and another member of aristocracy. Um, she had a very big wedding. She had, uh, of course, she stepped outside her marriage, so she had <laughs> lovers. Which, interestingly enough, her uh, husband uh, killed and fed to the dogs. Uh, she had kids with this man, and she actually had, in the end, four children with her. So she played a normal life. Wow. So here's where it gets twisted. Okay. So after her husband's death, uh, rumors of Bathory's cruelty began to surface. There had been earlier accounts of peasant women being murdered, but it was not until 1609 that rumors that she had killed noble women attracted attention. In 1610, King Matthias uh, signed uh, Grigori Thurso, Count Palatine of Hungary, and coincidentally, Bathory's cousin to investigate the claims. Between 1610 and 1611, uh, Thurso took depositions from people living in the area surrounding her estate, including the testimony of more than 300 witnesses and survivors. The stories of uh, Bathory's murders were, were further verified by physical evidence of mutilated, dying, or dead victims at the time of her arrest. And again, it gets more twisted. Her victims were mainly young girls. According to the testimonies, Bathory's initial targets were servant girls ages between 10 to 14. So the daughters of the local um, peasants in, the, in the, her area, uh, these victims had been lured to her estate uh, by offers as, of work as maids or servants to the castle. Some witnesses told Torzo of relatives who had died while of Bath Bathory's um, estate, abdu abductions were said to have also taken place. So she would abduct them and kill them. Um, between 1602 and 1604, after rumors of Bathory's atrocities have spread throughout the kingdom, Lutheran minister Isvan Magyari made complaints against her. Well, um, both publicly and in court of Vienna. So in 1610, Matthias II assigned Georgi Torzo, the Palatine of Hungary, to investigate. So the guy investigates, of course, and he finds out by October 1610, they have collected 52 witness statements. And by 1611, the number had risen over to over 300. So she was good at it. Yeah, Bathory, yeah. <laughs> Bathory is said to have begun killing daughters of this, um, of uh, you know, peasants uh, who were sent to her estate, and uh, um, she was luring them under the assumption that she was teaching them etiquette. Of course. 
some witnesses named relatives who have died and of course a, there were a lot of unmarked buried um graves so wow mm -hmm. yep well she not only just killed them she tortured her victims before killing them Bathory was suspected of having committed many forms of torture on her victims. Survivors and witnesses reported victims experiencing severe beatings, burning or mutilation of hands, freezing or starvation to death. According to the Budapest city archives, victims would be covered in honey and live ants or burned with hot tongs and then placed in freezing water. Bathory was said to have stuck needles into the victim's lips or body parts, stabbing at them with scissors or biting off their breasts, faces, and limbs. Mm. So it goes worse. She was rumored also to have vampiric tendencies. Mm. Bathory, who was said to have enjoyed drinking the blood of virgins, believing that it would preserve her beauty and youthfulness. She was also uh, rumored to bathe in the blood of her young victims. The story goes that she developed uh, this um, obsession after slapping a, a female servant in rage and discovered her skin looked younger after the servant's blood had splashed on. Uh, <laughs> Modern historians have claimed that these stories originated um, that were not really true, but it must be debated after all, so much torture. Yeah, of course. Of course. So on December 13th, 1612, uh, Nikola the Sixth Zurinsky confirmed the agreement with Thurzo about the imprisonment of Bathory and distribution of the estate. On New Year's Eve, 1612, Thurzo went to uh, Suzette Castle and arrested Bathory along with four of her servants who were accused of being her accomplices. Uh, Dorita Semestes, Ilona Joe, Katrina Beneka, and uh, Henos uh, Yavari. Um, according to Thereso's letter to his wife, his unannounced uh, visit found one girl dead and another living prey girl in the castle. But there is no evidence that they asked her what had happened to her. Although it is commonly believed that Bathory was caught in the act of torture, she was having dinner. Initially, Thereso made the declaration to Bathory's guests and villagers that he had caught her red-handed. However, she was arrested and detained prior to the discovery or presentation of the victims. It seems most likely that the claim of Theresa's discovery, Bathory covered in blood, has been the embellishment of fictionalized accounts. So basically she was arrested, but she was spared for execution. Mm -hmm. So most of the witnesses testified that they had heard the accusations from others, but they didn't see it for themselves. The servants confessed under torture, which was which is not credible in contemporary proceedings. They were the king's witnesses, but they were executed. Ilona Joe and Dorada uh, Zentis uh, had their fingers torn out with a pair of red hot pincers and were then burned alive. Due to his youth and the belief that he was less gullible, uh, Hanos Yavari was executed by a much less painful method, beheading. Afterwards, his body was burned on the same uh, pyre as Joe and Sentis. Uh, another servant, Isri Mahorova, initially escaped capture, but was burned alive after being apprehended. Katrina Beneka received a life sentence after evidence showed that she had been abused by other women. Oh, Lord. I know. So she was named the most prolific female murderer. And according to Guinness World Records, uh, Bathory is the most prolific female murderer and the most prolific murderer of the Western world back then. Wow. This is despite the precise number of victims remaining unknown and undebated. Um, upon collecting testimonies from 300 witnesses, Tarzo determined that Bathory had tortured and killed more than 600 victims. The highest number cited was 650. Wow. However, this number came from a claim by a servant girl that Bathory court, a Bathory's court official had seen the figure in one of her private books. The book never came to light, but Bathory's victim were said to have, uh, to have been uh, hidden in various places. The most common method was to have the body secretly buried in church graveyard at night oh wow oh, she had a heart she actually buried them wow 
you know, she was also compared to Vlad the Impaler. Uh, since her death, Bathory has become a prominent figure in folklore, literature, and music, often compared to Vla uh, Vlad the Impaler of Wa Wallachia. Uh, the two were separated by more than a century, but had a common reputation for cruelty, brutality, and bloodthirstiness across Eastern Europe. In 1817, saw the publishing of witnesses' accounts for the first time, showing that the stories of Bathory's blood, drinking, or bathing were legend rather than fact. Bathory's bloodthirsty reputation coincided with the vampire scares that haunted Europe in the early 18th century. It was said that in writing his book in 1897, Dracula, the novelist Bram Stoker was inspired by the legends of both Bathory and Vlad the Impaler. I wonder why. Her yeah. brutality had been questioned by historians. Several historians have argued that far from being a cruel and barbaric killer, Bathory was in fact merely a victim of conspiracies. Really? The Hungarian professor Laszlo Nagy uh, claimed the accusations and the proceedings against Bathory were politically motivated of due course. to the extensive wealth and ownership of large lands in Hungary. It is possible that Bathory's wealth and power made her a perceived threat to the leaders of Hungary, whose political landscape were overrun with major rival rivalries at that time. Bathory appeared to have supported her nephew, Gaber Bathory, ruler of Transylvania and rival of Hungary. It was not uncommon to accuse a wealthy widow or murderer witchcraft or of witchcraft or sexual misconduct to seize her lands yeah. so we don't know the actual truth no um it is possible mm -hmm. um that she was falsely accused because back true. then it was a different political scene and mm -hmm. it is true that back then they would seize her land just to remove her from there true. she was a noble woman but she has a lot of witnesses right and yeah. also all the witnesses were peasants so yeah. it wasn't like they had anything to gain out of it because 300 is kind of a high number it to is. be having a witness right. so there must be some kind of truth right uh in the whole story there has to be but to what extent she was that bloody we don't know no uh but she's recorded i mean she stayed in history yeah uh, true. so true. she's recorded in there as the prolific uh woman you know, and it's kind of rare because there are not that many women serial killer there as isn't. men. Although we seem to broadcast them. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Where we find them? Well, I, the reason oh why God. because people think <sighs> there's mostly men, but yeah. there is actual women that yeah. were prolific. So. This is true. This yeah. is true. Yeah. So, but here's the story. You go and read more if you want and make your own informed decision. Yeah. This is our take on it. Yep. Alrighty guys, until the next time, always remember the truth is always scarier. Bye! Bye.